So uh, we are back again sooner than expected because we have a uh, special um, special edition video. Is that what we're going to call it? Yeah, let's do that. Uh, we were tagged by Jen from Knit in the Zone and Train Track uh, Fiber Designs uh, to do the Knit Life Survey. Um, so this is going to be a series of questions that we're going to answer. Um, and at the end, we're going to tag some people just for funsies. So if you ever wanted to know more about us... Um, knitting wise and a little bit of personal stuff uh stay tuned because we're gonna talk about some stuff and answer some questions so um i guess we should introduce ourselves for people who don't normally watch the podcast <laughs> uh, i am robin i'm mary and you can find me on instagram at ravelry as teeny button and you can find my ravelry shop where i sell hand dyed yarn at teeny button studio on etsy and I am Snippin' Full on Ravelry, and on Instagram, I am Cherry Pearls Mary. So, um, we have a podcast group. It is Cherry Pearls Podcast. It'll be linked down below, and that's where you can find... Um, show notes. Show notes, but this isn't a podcast episode. So, that's where you can find any information that you want to know about the podcast. But we are so. planning on um, putting this into a thread in our podcast group yes. and seeing um, what your answers are to some yeah, of these questions. Yeah, if you would like to answer the questions, come tell us, uh, answer the questions in our thread, because I think it'd be super fun. Yeah, oh, I, I think it's cool information to yeah. know about people. So, um, you ready to get started? Sure. Okay, cool beans. I knit um, because it keeps me sane. I started knitting, oh, I took... I started knitting when I was younger, and I think that's an upcoming question, but why I continue to knit is it is something that brings me peace, and it helps um, keep me focused, and at times whenever I feel a lot of stress in my life, it kind of takes my mind off of the worry about other things going on, and how kind of gets me into a zen kind of a place. Mm -hmm. um, I, do, I totally find knitting peaceful, and um, that's kind of why I continue to do it. Yeah. Um, I first learned how to knit when I was very young. I was eight, I think, eight or nine, and my grandmother taught me. Um, and I honestly wanted to be able to make blankets and stuff for my Briar Horse models. So um, that's I kind of... I didn't know that. Yeah, I used to make cardboard stables and stuff. So these were going to be horse blankets. Yeah. So I kind of had that for a little bit. Um, and then whenever, um, when I was in high school... I found a pattern on Ravelry, that's how I discovered Ravelry, for the Fuzzy Bunnies, um, Fuzzy Mitten, her bunnies pattern. And I've always really been into stuffed animals. Um, it's been so bad, we used to have a one-in, one-out policy <laughs> for stuffed animals. So the idea of making my own was very appealing. So um, and that's how I learned how to like knit and purl and stuff. Yeah, you weren't um, a doll kid. You yeah. were a stuffed animal kid. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of what sparked my re-entry into knitting, really. Because I did it a little bit on and off when I was in, like, middle, you know, middle school. Um, but I really picked it up when I was in high school. So, um, again, I learned to knit. My grandmother taught me when I was little. I don't remember who instigated it. Do you remember? I wasn't there. I don't remember. Um, we had gone on a vacation and you were staying with me. Was that whenever y'all went to the Olympics? I'm not sure. Maybe. I don't remember. Um, so that's, that's how I learned. Um, I actually ended up teaching myself the rest of it through YouTube videos. Um, we've mentioned this in our first episode. Um, when I was 16, I had uh, my best friend was diagnosed with brain cancer. And um, after that, I kind of really wanted to knit him some hats because a lot of the hats that were donated to the children's hospital were smaller for smaller kids or they weren't very, you know, they're very frilly, very girly. So um, that's kind of, again, where I picked it up. I wanted to make, you know, stuffed animals and then I wanted to make hats for him. So I kind of... Um, that's kind of how I, how I got back into it again, mm -hmm. but I taught myself through YouTube, you know, how to yeah. curl and how to cast off sure. and, you know, I really only learned the basics with, with my Nana. So, which is funny because Nana did not teach me how to knit. Mm -hmm. Um, mom signed us, my sister and I up for knitting lessons, um, along with our two next door neighbor, um, neighbors. And the four of us would go to this, uh, I guess knit shop for a couple of, um, consecutive Saturdays and we knit this really really ugly stockinette scarf I think there's a question what's your first oh okay we'll get to that in a second yeah so um that's how I learned to knit and then I've had I knit a couple of things after that and then I've had a very long drought and then I picked it up a, a kind of around the same time that you did and it's weird because we both kind of came to it organically it wasn't like 
you said, hey, let's knit together. Or yeah. I said, hey, let's knit together. We just kind of came back to it at the same time. And I knit a couple of things for Jonathan as well mm. and um, really got it back into um, knitting hats for uh, cancer patients. Yeah. Which I still continue to do. Oh, that's easy. Long tail? Long tail. Long tail cast on for sure. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm doing a lot of stitches, I do the method where you use the inside and the outside of the cake. Yep. And if I'm not doing a lot of stitches, if I'm doing like less than 60, I'll measure the length of my arm because I know that's about 25 stitches. Um, but that's a trial and error thing. Sure. So, you know. Sure. But totally long tail. Long tail cast on, 100%. Long tail I for the win. do the cable cast on sometimes, and I do a lot of the figure eight for toe-up socks, but um, for just regular projects, long tail. Yep. Yep. Same. <laughs> Um, okay, so I really like cables because I usually do them without a needle and it seems like it goes a lot faster. Um, I like the look of lace, but I don't love having to count. I like lace that's kind of intuitive. Um, but lately I've been loving brioche. Brioche is kind of the thing that I'm really into lately. So um, I'll say brioche for right now. What do you think? Yeah, I'm similar to you. I love cables and I love lace, but I love slip stitches and mosaic yeah, knitting. Cool. So yeah, so... That's me. Um, that one's hard because it changes. Yeah. Um, I've got a couple favorites, but if I had to choose only one, it would be the Berry Patch Shawl by Lisa Hannes. It's oh, one of my most yeah. recent ones. I love it because it's so colorful. Mm. It's a great pattern, but I think what I really love about it is the colors because it, it's some of my favorite colors. Um, I used to scrapbook um, a lot, awful lot. Um, I, I used to do actually um, physical paper and all that kind of stuff like that, and then I went digital. But there was a phase to where I used those same colors almost exclusively in all of my summer uh, pages. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so that kind of brought me back to that. So I would have to say if oh, I have cute. to choose one, mm -hmm. it would be that one. Uh, mine is my Find Your Fade, which I brought over to show you guys. And, um, yeah, I always get it backwards. Uh, this is my Find Your Fade pattern by Andrea Mowry. I'm sure you know if you're watching. And this is my favorite just because it's so squishy and it kind of is like a palette of all of my yarn together and I like how it looks and it's big. This is the biggest I shawl. I love a big shawl. So that I like, I like the construction. I really loved knitting it. Um, it's a single, so it's like got the squish factor. So um, I think this one is my favorite for sure. This is the one I reach for whenever it's really cold. Um, you wear that one a lot. Yeah, not that it gets really cold that often. No. But whenever it does, this is the one I reach for. Yep. And I have plans to knit another one out of my Harry Potter yarns, probably the club yarns. Um, I don't know when I'm going to start that, but I just really enjoy this pattern. 22, I think. I have 33. That's interesting. Yeah. I actually don't keep a lot in my queue. I know a lot of people will use their cues to keep track of their favorites, but I don't do that. Yeah. And I recently actually took some stuff out of my queue. Yeah. The stuff goes into the queue once I have the yarn in hand for it. No, I don't do that. Or if I know I'm going to be casting it on within the next month or so. No, I don't do that either. Yeah. I mean, if I really love it and I know I want to knit it, then it will go in the queue. And that's why some things went out of the queue because I wasn't loving them as much as yeah. when they went in the queue. But It's a good incubation period to kind of think about if you're really ready yeah. You know, we revisit it at a later time. Yeah. I think it's, yeah, 21 or 22, something like that. Yeah. Fingering. Yeah, fingering weight, sock weight, for sure. Um, It's what I have the most of. It's what seems, you know, indie dyers seem to have the most of, and I'm kind of on an indie dyer kick right now. Um, I just feel like you can make everything with it. What's funny, though, is like when I got back into knitting, I was using all worsted or bulky, which is... And, and I remember somebody was knitting socks, and I was like, I can't imagine anybody knitting with yarn that small, yeah. and I can't imagine anybody using needles that small. And now I'm, I'm kind of the opposite. Whenever, Like when I was knitting that hat um, that I talked about in the last podcast, and it was in bulky, it was just like the yarn just did. It felt so bulky, yeah. and, and it was enjoyable for it to be fast and done quickly, but I was kind of missing my... Yeah, my fingering. Well, the lighter weights are better for layering. 
you know, if you're going to make a sweater or something, you know. Yeah. But this was a hat. You're not going to lay your hat. That's true. I yeah. mean, you could, but uh, if you're really cold, you could really rarely done. Yeah. Oh, this ugly stuck in it scarf that was done in probably red heart acrylic back when it was scratchy. I mean, literally scratchy. It was, I think it was gold. And I don't really understand it, but the knitting teacher had us doing in stockinette, so it just rolled into a two. Hmm. And um, I don't know why we didn't do it in garter. I guess she wanted us to learn how to purl, which we obviously did learn how to purl, but why yeah. weren't there any edge stitches or something to keep it from rolling? I don't remember if I even ever wore this thing or not. Yeah. Yeah. So that was my first one. I remember making a swatch out of some green acrylic. I don't know if I ever finished that, but the first thing I know I finished was this really, really hideous pastel green scarf out of some fun fur. Um, and I, I wore it. I've, I've worn it as recently as whenever I started college, I had it. I don't know where it is now. I don't know if it got lost or thrown away or if somebody took it or if it's somewhere up in the attic. But, um, yeah, it was really, really soft. It was like some sort of, it wasn't like the, the, the eyelash fun fur. It was the... Almost like the boucle fun fur. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was it was kind of it was kind of like funky. Like my friends and I would wear it, wear it ironically, you know. <laughs> but uh, I don't know how you wear something ironically, but okay. Yeah, it was it was really soft. So yeah, it's soft. Yeah, so that's that was my first thing I finished for sure. Well, maybe the swatch was really a horse blanket. Maybe it could have been. I remember crocheting um, like foundation chains to use as bridles and stuff. So I don't know if that counts because it's not knitting, but you know. Yeah, I don't know if a foundation chain actually no. counts as a, a project. I do not have anything. I mean, I finish all of my works in progress, mm -hmm. so I don't really have anything. You're a monotonous that's... knitter. Yes. You I... cast something on, you finish it. Yeah, yeah. So I don't have anything that's in hibernation still. I did have something that was in hibernation. I think the longest anything's been... A work in progress has probably been several months and it was this really, I don't know, you know, sometimes you have a project and you're working on it mm -hmm. and you're not loving it, but you still keep working yeah, on it. Yeah, you're like, I'm already, I'm already on this far, I might as well. Yeah, so it was this um, off-white shawl that I made. Oh yeah, you frogged it and you... Uh, yeah, and, yeah, and I finished it, but I never blocked it. And then last uh, Revel Olympics, Revel Olympics... August. I frogged it as one of the, I think there was a frogging um, yeah. metal that you could, or a frogging event you could enter, and that was, I frogged it. Yeah. And um, if you're a regular um, watcher of the podcast, you may have seen a ton of baby hats. Yeah, it, it was an off-white Karen Simply song. Yes, yes. And yeah. I don't know, I don't know. I, it, just, it was a good idea at the time. <laughs> It was a good idea at the beginning, let's mm -hmm. put it that way, and I was not loving it, but I still kept knitting it. Yeah. I still finished it. I have a pair of socks that I started last February um, that I intend to finish. They're from C.C. Almond. They're her Lady of Lollybrock socks. Oh, yeah. I was going to finish them for the October knit along because she was one of the featured designers, and I did not. Um, it's really, really heavily cabled on every single row, and they're, they're gorgeous, and I love the yarn. The yarn is Savvy Skeins. Um, but I just, I can't knit on them for too long or I get frustrated. So, um, that's been in progress for a year and a half, uh, and some change. I have a sweater that I've cast on before then that I'm, that's just sitting in there. It's out of some knit picks, um, that I'm probably never going to finish. Um. Then you should frog it and use the yarn for something else. I'm not going to use the yarn for anything else. I don't know what I would use it for. So I'm just, it's just in my closet. What, um. What yarn is it? It's the silk one, di diadem. No, that's not right. Gloss, maybe? Hmm. Yeah. It's this green color, and it's dark, and it's hard to see. Um, I knit the Risen cardigan out of, by Melanie Berg, and I like the I like the pattern. I just don't like the yarn. Um, I think Sometimes I cast that on two years match. ago. Yeah. I have my uh, cozy memories blanket, the the sock scrap blanket. That's been in progress a while, but I don't. I'm not in a rush to finish that either. Yeah, well, that one I don't consider that mm. hibernating though. Yeah, because I mean I started mine at my Granny Stark blanket in January, but I still work on it, so mm. that's I don't consider that a hibernation. Yeah. Hmm. 
Your granny, str- well, you said knit, so not your granny stripe blanket. I guess that ugly shawl. It was pretty big. How many skeins was it? Four. Ooh. Four, I think. It's a lot of skeins. Yeah. I, I might, um, I have a cardigan, the Madewell cardigan that I wear sometimes. It's the blue. Um, that used four and a half skeins of um, my, my MCN base. So that's probably the biggest project. But I knit the, I knit the 2X size, I think. So, you know, it's fairly decent amount of yardage. You know, that's one of the perks of, you know, losing weight is you, you know, use less yarn to knit sweaters. But um, it came out great, and I had it's the yarn. Nice, it's a, a really nice pattern and a good finished object. Yeah. So what's the... The white shawl again. <laughs> you know, this, this white shawl is... Yeah. Um, it was a stole. It was like rectangular. Yeah, it was yeah. weird. Well, I had gone to a wedding, and um, it was cold, and I, it was like one of those things where it was, it was too, too warm to wear a coat, but too cool not to wear anything, and I wanted some, like, I guess a little lightweight something. So this was something, after I got, went to the wedding, I'm like, okay, I'm going to knit me something to so in the future I've got something to wear that you know yeah. is pretty and will keep me warm and so yeah that was um that didn't work out but we've yeah. already covered that was it was it just the yarn or it was the, the yarn pattern? it was the yarn the mm. pattern there's nothing wrong with the pattern I think the pattern is wisp so um it's a nice pattern I went and looked at their project pages I think um I might have just deleted it or I don't remember. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't see it, but I went through it real quickly. Yeah. Um, the pattern again, nothing wrong with the pattern. Um, I think it was just, I think it was the color. You know, if yeah. it was like a creamy color, and I think if it had been a white or some other, or even a black. Yeah, but then you have to do it with black yarn. Well, that didn't happen. I've done one in black. Yeah. Then I'm not doing that again. So yeah, yeah, it was really the yarn, not the pattern. Yeah, I knit, I think I talked about this in our last podcast episode, I knit my very first sweater was the Amiga cardigan from the Knitting Magazine from like back in the day. I think I knit it in 2010, so that's how old it is. Um, And I used some bamboo, like Karen Spa, Naturally Spa something from Hobby Lobby in this really light blue color. It was really pretty in the skein, and it was really pretty knit up, the color was, but my gauge was off. Like my gauge was right, but I didn't use the right weight of yarn. And you just didn't like the fabric. I didn't like the fabric and I didn't like, I didn't cast off with a, with a stretchy cast off. So the bottom of the sweater didn't close around my hips. And like, I picked these really big wooden buttons that weren't ugly in and of themselves, but they didn't really match the, the sweater. But, um, yeah, I know I don't really love button sweaters. So, um, you know, that was your first sweater is... You know, not always, not that your first sweater is always bad, but like whenever you don't have, whenever you don't have somebody who knows what they're doing, like to give you advice or I didn't, I didn't ask for help on Ravelry or I didn't like stop to think about it. I just cast off, you know, I just, I'm like, this yarn is a pretty color. I didn't realize it didn't match anything else I owned. Like it was, mm -mm. was I like socks. I am a fan of socks. Y'all know that. Yeah. I love shawls. But I knit a lot of hats because I, I donate them to charity. But I love shawls. I also love fingerless mitts. So, yeah. Yeah, I like socks because they're portable. And they're like little, they're not instant gratification, but less so than like knitting a big shawl or a sweater or something. Mm-hmm. And um, they're like little pieces of art. Because like you could wear colors on your feet that you wouldn't wear in a shawl by your face. Or, you know, funky stitch patterns or, you know, you know. So that's why I like socks. But I like shawls. Um, I like knitting sweaters, but I don't like actually knitting sweaters. I don't like the huge, like, miles and miles of stockinette. I don't love that. But um, I like having finished sweaters. I don't, I don't mind miles and miles of stockinette. Yeah, I get bored. I'm okay with it. Yeah. I like it because it's just like, same thing, same thing, same thing. Yeah. MCN. Yeah, we're, we're fans of MCN. It is so soft. Yeah. I'm really partial to my own base because it's so squishy. And I think a lot of other indie dyers must use a similar base because there's some really good MCN out there. I like 7525 for all purpose. I would knit anything out of 7525. See, I prefer 8020. 
I don't notice that much of a difference. It, I find it a little plumper. Maybe. Maybe that's just the way, like, the base is. Maybe it's not the innate fiber content itself. But, um, yeah, 80, 20, or 75, 25, I'd knit anything. Hats, socks, sweaters, now, scarves, I don't, shawls. I don't love fingering hats. Yeah. I really want to do my hats in either in a thicker, or a worsted. Yeah. I don't think I would use MCN for socks. Always. I don't or hats. Think. Maybe hats, but I... MCN usually for it me is reserved for like neck stuff, like yeah. shawls and yeah. I agree with you there. Yeah. Nope. I am a little bit. Um, I think every yarn has its purpose. I do too, but I don't necessarily want to. I don't have the same purposes that I used to, so I don't have the purposes that require me to knit with acrylic yarn most of the time. So, uh, I'm a little bit of a yarn snob. Whenever I have to knit with acrylic, I'm like, yeah, I'm not really loving this. Mm, you're a little more vocal than that. Yeah, it's a little bit of a toned down <laughs> version of it. I am, I am noticing, I kind of, uh, on this kick where I only want to knit with indie yarn. Um, like indie dyed yarn. And I don't know if that's because I'm an indie dyer and I want to support other indie dyers. I think that has something to do with it. Um, yeah, I just feel like that's kind of where the industry is going a little bit. Not that I'm like, not that I know anything about anything really. But, um, I just, like, it's got a lot of character. And, um, you know, I love supporting, you know, people who I know, you know, you know the person who's making it. And you know, you know. Well, this is someone's livelihood. And, and you're like, hey, you know, I, yeah. don't, I don't mind supporting that. Yeah, not that it's not, you know, Rowan or, you know, a big company's livelihood. But it just feels a lot more personal. Yeah. And, and I, I enjoy shopping small. <laughs> Ryan Beck. Ryan Beck. And then... Edinburgh. And that, that's the second one. Yeah. What about retreats? Um, I don't know. I mean, the retreats kind of come and go, huh? Well, there's the Curious Handmade one. Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah. There's the, I don't really think of retreats that much. Yeah. Um, they're fun. The one the I knit, love go I would love to go to one. Yeah. I've only been to one. The Knitting in the Hills retreat sounds like fun. The one in Texas. Oh, yeah. That does sound like yeah. fun. Um... Isn't there some one, of the Ann Bud ones sound nice? Isn't there one in Canada you wanted to go to? Yeah, it was one of the Ann Bud ones. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Now, there's one coming up. This one, Lambs on the Run or something like that. It's um, two shops, I think, um, somewhere in the Midwest. They're do they're going to Edinburgh. Ooh, fancy. Let's do that. Ann Bud, Ann Bud's going on that fancy. one. Fancy. We're going to go on a yarn cruise one day. Yeah, I want to do the one that goes across the Atlantic. Mm -hmm. um, of course, that will happen when we hit the lottery. But that one sounds cool. Where yeah. you go and you stop in Iceland on the way over and just just stop in Iceland for a minute. Just, yeah. Just, just well, stop. no, not for a minute. A couple of days. Yeah. So um, it's got to be some acrylic. Yeah. I haven't. I mean, I am still going through the acrylic that I bought when I first got back into knitting because I came around to. Indie dyed and natural fibers much later than you did, and um, and then I have people sending me acrylic they're never going to use also. But yeah. so it's got to be some acrylic that's in my stash. I have no idea. Uh, you know, maybe I still have something from two thousand eight. Yeah, maybe I went through a nitpicks phase. Um, yeah, yeah. You know. When I first got back into knitting and I was making stuffed animals all the time, I would make them and donate them to Children's Hospital. And I wanted to use um, Wool of the Andes Superwash. So I have probably 50 balls of Wool of the Andes Superwash in browns and grays and blacks and animal colors, oranges. And um, I actually, in high school, I was in Talented Art and I did my senior um, budget. Like, senior series like series project um I knit it was all knitted almost all knitted I did sew a couple of the animals I knitted oh, right. yeah I knitted and sewed animals in various stages of uh distress well it was all animal cruelty yeah it was yeah I had this big thesis you know this big um paper about you know what's the word I'm looking for softening the effects of cruelty for consumers and all this kind of you stuff you had a knitted armadillo I had an armadillo that was roadkill <laughs> I had a mouse in a trap. I had a fox on a fur farm. 
I had a cow that was like strung up by the back leg. Yeah, it was giant cow. Yeah, it was life size. Yeah, I that's why I have a lot of yarn left over from that. Um, but that's probably my oldest stash, I think. I am gifty. You are a gifty knitter. Yeah, I'm a selfish knitter mostly. I have a problem with the word selfish. We talked about this recently. Um, when people go out and do things they enjoy, people don't call them selfish. You don't hear of selfish fishermen, selfish golfers, um, selfish readers. You, I mean, why is it that if you're knitting something for yourself, why is that selfish? It seems like it's women's hobbies. Like, oh, you're baking for yourself or you're sewing for yourself. You That's should bogus. be sewing for your kids or your grandkids. That's bogus. Like, it's, no. It's, it's, no one ever says, oh, you're fixing that car for yourself. That's selfish. Uh, that's focused. Yeah, so we so, have some feelings about that. Yeah, I I mean, I love giving away my hand knits, but you could say that's selfish because I do it because I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. So that's no different than knitting for yourself. Mm -hmm. You're doing it because you enjoy it. I do it because it makes me feel good that I'm doing something for somebody else. So you could say that's selfish because I, I'm still getting something out of it. Yeah. So I, I'm, not, I'm not getting the oh, selfish knitter thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm not buying it. I knit for myself. Because I know the work that goes into it. You're knit worthy. And I'm always cold, so I wear my knits year-round. I wear hand-knit socks almost every night. I don't know anybody else who does that. Nope. Not me. So, not I, I, I don't really have a problem with that, you know? No, I'm, I mean, that's why I've got a problem with the selfish part of it. Because I don't, I don't find, I don't think it's really selfish. Yeah. I love um, listening to books, audiobooks. Um, I check them out from the library. You use Overdrive? Um, well, yeah, there's Overdrive, and then there's a new one. I can't remember the name of it. But, yeah, our local library has a lot of books. Um, there was one that I read recently that I absolutely loved. It was by Lisa C., um, the girl, uh, the tea girl on Hummingbird Lane, I think it was. Mm -hmm. It was so interesting. I didn't know about the tea industry in China. And I love podcasts. Yeah, I'm a little behind on podcasts. I kind of have a handful that I watch as soon as they come out. Um, Vol and Vine, a Yarngasm podcast, I watch that one as soon as it comes out. I usually watch Knitting Expat. I watch Mina. Um, Candace of Pen Feathers and Pearls. Um, I'll watch Lynn at Sunshine and Bubblegum because we love Lynn. I'll watch Knit the Books. Um, it just depends also on what I'm doing. Um, I really love Amy at Stranded, Stranded Podcast. So you um, just mostly watch podcasts while you're knitting? I, it depends on what I'm knitting. If I'm knitting something that does not require a lot of concentration, I'll watch podcasts. If it does require a lot of concentration, I have this habit of re-watching old shows that I've already seen because I know what's going to happen, so I don't even really need to pay attention. Um, right now I'm watching Pretty Little, Pretty Little Liars. Um, on Netflix? On Netflix, yeah. Um, I just got through Parks and Recreation. I watch Arrested Development. Um, Gilmore Girls. Gilmore Girls. Gilmore Girls is so good. It's like calming. It feels like coming home. I yeah. Love Gilmore Girls. Um, I don't, can't believe I missed that the first time around. Yeah. Um, sometimes if something is really complicated, like if I'm picking up stitches or something, I'll turn off the music, turn off the movie or whatever and listen to music. Um, but I think my ideal level of stimulation is like something audio while I'm doing something visual. Like I can't just sit there and knit in silence. I just can't. So that's, I don't know if you're like that too. I have to do that whenever I'm doing lace. Yeah, just sit in silence. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's different for different people. And I think it's a generational thing too. I was reading a little bit about this, how um, younger people are kind of more used to having that in the back of their head. Well, the I mean, I, I know like when you were in school, the teachers would play music in the background yeah. during, during class. And obviously whenever I grew up, you know, back when the earth was cooling, we didn't do that kind of thing. Yeah. You know, yeah. so that's a very interesting thing to think about. You prefer metal needles? 100%. I hate wood. I'm a tight knitter. Mm -hmm. So I need something that's going to be slick. Yeah. So even metal needle, all metal needles will not work for me. Yeah. If it's got a little bit of texture on it, that just drives me up the like wall. Like the zings. I want something that's nice and slick. Yeah. I like wood for certain things and I like metal for certain things. Um, I like metal for small diameter needles like for socks I like metal um but I do prefer wood for um shawls sometimes especially like with um like silk or cashmere if it's a little bit slippery I kind of want wood because I'm a looser knitter so I've had stitches like completely off the needle before 
So I really love the, the idea of the royal needles from Knitter's Pride with the metal tip and then the wooden shaft bit. But um, I've had some of them break. So I don't know if I just got a bad batch or what. But that, I like the idea of that because it's pointy at the front, you know, pointy at the tip. And then it has the... the this is in the front, party in the back? Yeah, it's like the knitting mullet. <laughs> yeah. The knitting mullet. <laughs> The waffle hat. The waffle hat. I have knit a ton of waffle hats. It is a great pattern. It's easy to remember. And it's, you know, more interesting than just straight, straight yeah. stuck in it. I have knit four pairs of monkey socks. The monkey pattern by Cookie A. You do love that pattern. I love that pattern. It works with variegated. It works with striping. It works with tonals. It works with speckles. Um, yeah. I'm a fan of the monkey sock. Um, I'm going to knit the Find Your Fade again. That's a great pattern. I feel like there's some other other patterns I've knit more than once, but they're not coming to me off the top of my head. But I know the monkey socks for sure. Yeah, I did the speckled space sock twice. That's a good pattern. So um, yeah, that's that's the only thing I've knit more than once. Only things. Um, well, I like to make jewelry. I scrapbook. I read. Can you think of anything else? You used to be into photography. Well, I still like taking pictures. Yeah, yeah but you used to do like classes and stuff. Uh, not really, really classes. Yeah. I mean, I did a couple of online things, and mm -hmm. I do participate sometimes on online challenges and things like that. Yeah, so I do like I do love the look of of black and white photography. Mm -hmm. That always spoke to me. I do a little bit of photography. Um, not really so much recently, but I do have a couple of old film cameras, and I took a class. Um, at UNO on um, processing film. So I can do it. It's a pain in the butt, so I'm just going to bring it to Walgreens. Uh, oh, you just don't pay use to get a lot of film. But I, no, I don't use very much. No, I have a lot of it that digital. went bad, unfortunately. But i um, not super into taking pictures lately. I mean, knitting is really the big, the big thing. I can't think of, like, I cross-stitch a little bit. I have a half-finished project that's been, you know, Yeah, I had a cross-stitch phase. Yeah, you have a lot of cross-stitches in your room. Mm -hmm. I love them. They're really cute. Um, but other than that, I knit, I dye yarn, um, spin, I spin. Yeah, I do spin. Not very often though. I can't remember. I think the last time I spun was at the retreat in September, but, um, I like it, but I have to be in the mood for it. And like, sometimes it hurts my back cause I don't have a, a stool or anything. I just sit on the sofa and like lean over the edge of a sofa. Um, maybe that's something to ask for for Christmas. You can, uh, maybe, have you tried borrowing, um, Seth's yoga strap? Mm-mm. Mm, yeah. Like, Wasn't there a stool they were talking about at End of the Wool that was like yeah. $10 or something? Yeah, I mean, I was, it has like a tractor seat on it. I think they mm. were getting it at um, Home Depot. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe an idea. Yeah, I like spinning. Um, I, we do some baking sometimes, like Pinterest recipes and stuff. Oh, yeah, I, I like to bake. I wouldn't call that a hobby. It feels like that's something a lot of people do, but maybe it is a hobby. Well, so I, some people don't like to bake at all. Yeah. And I love to bake. Yeah. <laughs> Something chocolate. Yeah, we're fans of chocolate. Always a fan of chocolate. But not I'm not a dark chocolate fan. I am. I love dark chocolate. Yeah, I, I'm much more of a milk chocolate fan. I am not a the darker the better kind of person. Like, I hit my limit around 72%. I'm like, after that, I'm like, mm, I don't know about that. But anything less than 72% cocoa, I'm, I'm, I'm down with. Didn't you have something recently that was just too dark? Yeah, it was like 86%. And I'm like, mm, no. Yeah, yeah, I love me some chocolate. Yeah, they do, um, they have the Fiber One Brownie Bars. Mm -hmm. I really love those. Those are good. Yeah, those are really good. Sid loves the gummies. See, I don't like I don't get gummies. gummies. No. I've never liked gummies. I don't get gummies. Also, don't like sweet tarts, those kind of things. Yeah, if I'm going to eat candy, it's going to be chocolate. Yeah. It's going to be a Reese's Cup. That's what it's going to be. <gasps> My, that is my favorite Reese's cup chocolate. Yeah, and you mean butter. you mean Larry are the Reese's cup crew. Yeah, yeah. I I can admit now that there might have been some uh, Reese's cups that went missing from your Halloween candy after you went to sleep. <laughs> have you seen the video where the the parents are telling the kids that they ate their Halloween candy? The one who is it? Jimmy Fallon does it, or somebody, somebody, yes, That's and so they're cute. just, and but they didn't really, and so the kids having a meltdown. Like, no, I was thinking of the cute ones where the kids are like, "Oh, it's okay, you deserve some too," and I was like, oh. "No, the ones I saw, the kids are having like a." Oh, I saw, meltdown. I saw the nice ones. Maybe you saw the bad ones. 
Um, I don't have a single favorite color. You have a couple? Yeah. I mean, I used to have a single favorite color. It used to be red. I mean, it was red. That was it. It was red. Mm -hmm. But now it's more, I also, there's something fuzz flying around. I also love like fuchsia mm -hmm. and I love teal. I love teal. So that's kind of why the, the berry patch shawl is my favorite right now because I really love all the colors in that shawl. Mm -hmm. Those are like my colors right now, but I love teals and, and like fuchsia, raspberry kind yeah. of thing. I still like red, but I'm not, I don't love red as much as I used to love red. Yeah. And I love purple too. Larry loves purple. Yeah, I'm I'm much more of a um, what is it, gemstone color? Jewel. Jewel, jewel tones. tones. I'm not I'm much more a fan of jewel yeah. tones. So y'all know me, I am a pastel girl. See, I'm 24 not, I'm, 7. I don't love pastels. I love pastels. That's one of the reasons why I love Knox Yarn Company, because she can do a pastel like nobody else can. Like she does the most amazing pastels. I love mint, I love pink. I love butter yellow. I love like really soft green kind of color, like See, lilac. This will work because everything that's too pale for me, you love. Mm -hmm. And anything that's too bright for you. We complement each other. Yeah. yeah. I do like bright colors occasionally. Mm -hmm. I like bright colors fairly often, actually. But um, I just really like pastels. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I don't think they work the best with my coloring, like my, my hair color and everything. I think I look good with the dark hair and jewel tones. And I probably look better in pastels. But, you know, who cares? Wear what, what, what you want. Wear what you want. Because, yeah. you know. Life's too short. Whatever. Someone just got woken up from their yeah. nap. Yeah. So, the, um, do we have pets? We do have pets. Uh, Y'all have seen her before if you watch the podcast. This is Pearl. Uh, she is my baby. I adopted her in 2015. Um, from a local rescue, she is a some sort of mix, Siamese, Lynx Point Siamese. She's got stripes. She's got the blue eyes. She's a little bit cross-eyed. And she wants down, she, so there she's she doesn't. She's not a holy cat. She's She'll not. sit with you, but she wants to be, yeah. like, she doesn't want you to hold on to her. Yeah. Um, all of our animals have been adopted. Um, we have an older cat named Whiskers, who is 17. And she is snow white with blue, blue eyes. And uh, we have a younger cat. I think she's, she raises what, four? Three or four? Four. Uh, said found her in a ditch and brought her home. And he called me and he's like, I'm going to try to sneak this kitten I found into the house. You think mom will notice? And I'm like, yep. Mom's going to notice. So we weren't going to keep her, but nobody, we couldn't find anyone else to take her. So uh, we ended up with her. But she's kind of... She's a smoke coat tabby or something, something like that. But she's a, uh, she's wound a little tight. Yes. She's a little. She's uh, high strung. Yeah, but um, we love her just the same. So um, right now we just have three cats. Uh, we used to have dogs, um, but we're gonna wait a little bit. You know, I'm I'm probably gonna get a dog whenever we move out, because I miss having dogs. But they are a lot of work. A lot more work than cats. So. Definitely letting people in and out throughout the night, and if you have to evacuate for a hurricane, there's you know the added. Mm -hmm. stress and cost and if you go out of town you have to board them you can't just leave them at home with a plate of food and say good luck but uh you could but depending on the dog they they might eat it all like within five minutes of yeah the yeah we had we had one like that yeah um now i haven't always had um rescues mm -hmm. um when i was little we had a basset hound that we got from a breeder um all of our no i was gonna say all of our cats were rescues but that's not well wasn't officially my cat my sister had a a, a Persian that she had bought from a, a neighbor who was a breeder mm -hmm. but um we've had golden retrievers um those we also got from a breeder and we had one litter of puppies and and that was it on that um and then the last two dogs we had those were rescues yeah and all of our cats except for my sister's cat growing up had all been rescues yeah. I feel very strongly about rescue animals and adopting animals um so I'm really glad. I, I would. I don't think I would ever go to a breeder just because that's not for me. Um, I would always rescue. So that's yeah. that's just me. Well, growing but, up, my mom really wanted a basset hound. Yeah. Well, they have breed specific rescues now, and they're easier to find if you want a specific well, breed. Yeah. But back and, then, and back then, I mean, this is before the internet, and the same thing with the goldens. The goldens were before we had kids. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, again, that the internet was. Um, not out there and so you didn't really know and and um philip really wanted to have a golden retriever Goldens are such good dogs they are some of the best dogs yeah. and um and then he wanted to have a litter um so of course we had two yeah. so yeah but i've sent 
all of our latest animals. Definitely all those mm. were, have been rescued. Oh, we do have fish. Seth has two fish. Those are his sons. He keeps them upstairs. <laughs> I'm not a fish person. I'm not a fish person. I'm not a bird yeah. person. Well, that's where my name comes from. Um, my fish that I had in college. Whenever I went, whenever I moved to the dorms at Louisiana Tech. Your business name. Yes. Well, my Instagram name, too. I was going to say, Robin did not come from no. the fish. Um, the only pet you could have in the dorms was a fish. And I'm like, well, I don't want to live without a pet. I want, you know, a pet. So I got a, a beta fish. And one night, my roommate and I were thinking about names. And we're like, oh, let's name him Sir Cornflake of Teeny Button. And it kind of stuck because it's, like, vaguely crafting related. But, um, yeah, I just thought it was cute. But he lived a long time. Dad had a beta that lived, like, three or four years. But, um... Yeah. Not super into fish. No, not a fish. Yeah. I like, um, I had hamsters growing up and I loved my hamsters. Oh, I had pet rats whenever I moved out. Um, after, I think around 2012, I got three little pet rats and they're so smart. They were litter box trained. They would do tricks. They would sit up and sit on command. Um, they were really cool. They're really cool. Put them on a leash, take them for a walk. Yeah. I was, a, I was that guy. I was that a, girl. They had a bit of an odor though. Yeah, well, they, they're they not, they're clean, but they smell. Well, it's kind of like a basset hound. You know, ba you know yeah. basset hound is, just, you know, they, they have an odor to them. Well, they have scent glands. And yeah. You, you know, I mean, for some animals, you can get the scent glands removed, but then, you know, there's some complications with that sometimes. But, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't a big deal. But they were really cute and they were really smart. I named them after cheeses because that was the thing to do, I guess. But uh, they were awesome. So I would get them again if... if if I had someone who would put up with it, but I doubt that, but, you know. Tea. Coffee. Yeah, we're, we're I will drink tea. I, I like tea. tea. I love tea. I like David's tea. I um, love David's tea. I like the four o'clock brand. We got some in a swap once and I really want to try to get some more. So I like that. Uh, I like vanilla chai. I love chai. Yeah, I like tea, okay. I do prefer coffee. I prefer mochas. I prefer lattes. Um, I will drink regular coffee occasionally, but I have to kind of doctor it up. I do sugar and not a whole lot of cream, um, but I couldn't drink it black. You can never drink it black. See, coffee for me has to be almost white and so have so much sugar in it, you have to start with a stick. <laughs> And at that point, why bother? Yeah, just just try milk and sugar. Have a Coke or a diet Coke in this case. Yeah. So um, yeah, but tea, I absolutely am nuts for tea. Um, my favorite right now is the chocolate macaroon. Oh by yes, tea. that's so good. Um, I don't know if anybody's noticing the chocolate theme here, but this yeah. uh, that chocolate macaroon. I mean, it's like drinking candy. It's so good. For fans, the cinnamon, the the coffee crumble cake. Is that what it is? The coffee cake one. That one's really good too. Mm -hmm. David's tea has some great teas. They have a mug that I'm thinking about getting. People keep sending it to me, and I'm like, I know, but it has like a little fox on it, and people know that I love foxes, so they keep sending it. So um, that is all the questions. Um, we are gonna we are gonna tag uh, Lynn at Sunshine and Bubblegum. Lynn, if you would like to answer these questions on your podcast, um, we will send you a message with the full texty thing list of questions that is a much better way to describe <laughs> it <laughs> texty thing uh so thank you to jen for tagging us this was super fun um something a little bit different especially yeah, since... i learned something yeah what'd you, what'd you learn? that the spot the why you started knitting because you oh yeah oh yeah this. oh yeah didn't it? little hashtag robin fact a little known fact that you can use whenever gallon yeah, jeopardy know. sometimes yeah or, yeah yeah well, now that wouldn't be a jeopardy question i don't know so um, we're going to list, um, we're going to post the list of questions in the Ravelry group. So if you would like to answer and um, tell us your answers, that'd be super fun. Yeah, that'd be really cool. Yeah. So Learn um, something about y'all. Yeah, definitely. I miss doing vlogs and like non-podcasty kind of stuff. So that might be something we do more. So I um, hope, like hope you enjoyed watching this. Um, come answer the questions in our Ravelry group and uh, we will talk to you on our next podcast episode. Sounds good. All right. Bye, Bye guys. Everyone.